If you're watching this, you're probably like my younger self. You probably thought that getting closer to Christ and starting a relationship with him was about getting right first and then going to God. Putting up this front and improving yourself first and then going to him because you have to be some degree of worthy. Wrong. We're not saved by our works. I was so confused. I was so lost. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what exactly would would get me into heaven, what wouldn't get me into heaven. And just like so like trying to make this bucket list and viewing it as like a checklist of things to be and things not to be. But I didn't realize that's not how our relationship with God works. We're not saved by our own works. We're not saved by the things we do. We're not redeemed through what we do on our earth because nothing we do is good enough to get us into heaven. So we're not saved by what we do. We're not saved by our actions. We're not saved by how many lives we change. We're not saved by how many, um, how much we bulk up in the gym. We're not saved by how successful we become. We're not saved by how much we donate to others. We're not successful because of the family that we build up. We're not successful because of the businesses that we grow and the empires we build. We're redeemed through the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This doesn't come from getting right to get go to God. It comes from going to God to get right. Make that flip, switch flip in your mind. Flip your mindset about this. It's not about putting up this front of being some righteous way to get to God. God, he loves us. He loves us. He cherishes us. And he is willing to redeem us regardless of who we are, of what we've done. It does not matter. No matter how severe. We feel all the time that we're undeserving of God's love. And we're truly not. Not in God's eyes. Because God is eternally merciful and he's eternally forgiving. And as followers and as people who want to get into following God, we have to recognize that. We can't let our own self-limitations and our own limiting beliefs about us hinder our courage to get into the relationship that we need with God. So we're not saved by our own works. We're saved by the redemption of Jesus Christ. And the way that we get that redemption is just simply praying to him. And there's one prayer that I need you to do. There's one prayer that is, that is required of you. If you want to be redeemed, if you want to start your relationship with God, then this one prayer is crucial. But the caveat to this, and the massive caveat, should I say, is that you believe in him. You have to believe fully with your heart, I mean 100%, that Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. That he sacrificed his life so that you could have one. You have to believe that the reason why we're not in the depths of hell right now suffering is because of the sacrifice that Jesus made for our sins. Because in reality, we deserve the punishment that he got. We deserve to be crucified and killed for our sins. Everything that we've ever done. Everything that has ever been done. Everything that is currently being done. And everything that will be done that is sinful. The punishment for these actions is something that we deserve. But Jesus loved us so much that he's going to take that punishment for us so we can have eternal life on the cross, eternal life in heaven with him. It's the greatest act of love and sacrifice in human history. And we can't let our own self-limiting beliefs believe that we're not able to capitalize this on this opportunity that he gave us. So the, really there's just one prayer that you have to do. But you have to believe you have to believe that what I'm saying is true. You have to believe that what God says that he did for us is true. And when I say believe, I don't mean like around 50% or 65%. I mean 100%. Just as much as, for example, you can believe that you pick up your phone. You can pick up your phone. That you can walk. That's how much you need to believe. And that comes through studying. So... When you have this knowledge and when you believe 100%, you need to pray this prayer. Simply, we declare God as our Lord and Savior. We declare him as the one in heaven and the one that is the one we worship. So first, to do that, we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Now, to declare that his works will be done on earth, to declare that we will devote our lives from here on out to doing the things that he wants us to do, to live according to his rules. We're going to say, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
to ask God for his mercy and for his blessings, we're going to say, give us this day our daily bread. Now, to ask God to forgive us for our sins and to forgive us and to give us the ability to forgive others who have sinned against us. We're going to say, forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Now, on this journey toward, towards Christ, we're going to be experiencing a lot of temptation. We're going to be tempted to go to sin. We're going to be tempted to act out our lustful desires. We're going to be tempted to fall back on our bad habits. To, to counter this, we seek God's mercy. We seek his understanding and we seek his guidance and protection. Now, in this prayer, we declare this by saying, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and glory forever and ever. Once again, declaring his greatness and his sovereignty over our lives. Now, after you've said all of this, so let's put it all together. Our Father, heart in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us for our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and glory forever and ever. Once you've said this, and obviously take it slow, take it step by step, it's a lot to memorize. If you want to, you can repeat this section of the video over and over again until you get the hang of it. Once you've done this, you have to declare that you're going to make the U-turn of life. And this U-turn is called repentance. Repentance is declaring that you're going to stop living for the world. You're going to stop living for the desires you have of your flesh and the desires that other people have put on you in the world. You're going to stop living the life that you used to live and start living for God now. Making that U-turn. That's repentance. So we say something like, Father, forgive me for all my sins. I repent for everything I've ever done and everything I will continue to do. And I beg for your mercy. Now, in addition to this, we also have to declare that we want a relationship with God. To do this, we simply say, it's as simple, really, as God, I want to pursue a relationship with you. I'm tired of following my own ways. I know I've tried things on my own. I've tried to be my own navigator. I've tried to be my own leader in life, and I've, I've come up short all the time. So God, I'm seeking your guidance. I declare you as the one I want to have a relationship with and the one that is my Lord and Savior. That last part, that's the third part. We have to declare God as our Lord and Savior. We have to declare him as our sovereignty, that the firm found, that he will be the firm foundation of our lives from this point forward. Because if we don't do that, then we're not declaring the God that we worship. We're not declaring the God that we're pursuing. Because if we pursue a wrong, the wrong God, if we pursue a false God that isn't Jesus Christ, we're serving Satan. And that's what we've, are, we've already been doing for our entire lives up to this point, so it's counterproductive. So we declare God as our Lord and Savior. We declare him as the one that is going to protect us and the person, the God that we're going to put our trust in from now on. That we're going to believe in him, that we're going to abide by him and we're going to follow his way instead of our own way, instead of the world's way. And then, amen. This is the prayer that you need. I really hope that you found value in this so that you're maybe incentivized to actually go and repeat this for yourself and you'll, God's going to have no child in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus loves you. Take care.